Hey, my chemo kitchen friends. It's, uh, it's Bob. And we are going to make a beautiful king salmon dish that Chef Terry Rattereau, the chef in the hat, donated to the Chemo Kitchen cookbook. It's full of great flavors, chanterelle mushrooms, and celery root, and topped with a beautiful gremolata from, made with hazelnuts and Italian parsley and uh, panko breadcrumbs. So let's get started, and I'm going to turn this into this. So what do we have to do? We've got to do a little prep for this. And uh, we're gonna start out with the mushrooms. And these are a little tricky foraged mushrooms. They've got uh, you know debris from the forest. And there's a little dirt. There's some pine needles. But the thing is, you don't want to wash these. You don't want to get them wet. We've been working on just drying them out a little bit, so we don't want all that moisture in the pan. So I'm using this little brush here. You can use a paper towel to wipe these down. And when you get most of this off, you're not gonna get too worried about being obsessive about it, but that's what, that's what we do. We brush them off, we put them to the side. And here we go, look at this. Brush the cap off, get the big debris off. You don't wanna be eating any pine needles. I mean, you could, they're not bad for you. But I know we need to make it nice and clean. We're dealing with people who have chemo or having chemo. You don't want to have uh, too many foreign objects for you to get, possibly get sick to your stomach. But these are great mushrooms. Now, if you can't find these, you know, these are out of season. These because they are seasonal. Um, you know, we, you've got to make it with some other mushrooms, you know. Get some shiitakes or portobellos. Don't uh, not make it because you can't find the chanterelles, okay? That, that would be a shame because it's so delicious. All right, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna clean the rest of these up and we'll come back with something else. See you in a bit. Well, I got my good buddy, Jerry Corso here. He owns Bardell Corso, a great uh, pizzeria and small plates joint in uh, Beacon Hill with his wife, Angelina. And he said, hey, Bob, let's, we don't need to use a knife, let's just tear these. And they tear so beautifully. So this is a little trick. This is an insider um, pro tip from Jerry <laughs> and Bart El Corso. And look at how gorgeous these are. We're gonna saute these in just a little bit. Tearing it up. Tearing it up. Tearing it up. Well, let's talk about this knobby thing here. They're not as hard to find as they used to be, and you could definitely find them at better supermarkets. This is a celery root, or as Terry Rattereau might call it, celeriac in French. And this definitely has a strong uh, celery scent to it. Uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll find them with the long green tops on them, but it's so much harder to find them that way anymore. The tops do go bad more quickly. So we're going to take this and we're gonna, we're gonna just kind of work it like this. We're gonna just scrape because one, celery root is like $2.99 a pound and you don't wanna waste it. So we're just going to gently peel it like this. Now you can use a peeler, but I like using a knife like this. You see, you can Okay, practice your knife skills this way. I've got a lemon. I've got some celery root. I've got some cold water, tap water. The celery root um, will oxidize. What is oxidized? That is, once it hits the air, it will turn brown, like an apple will. And so what I'm going to do is make something called acidulated water. I've got a leftover lemon from another use. I squeeze it into the cold water. I'll put the other piece in there too for giggles. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna make this, uh, we're gonna cut this into matchsticks or julienne as they would say. Let's 
talk about the main attraction. This is Zamadish, and I found this beautiful troll caught king salmon. It's from Alaska, down at the Pike Place Market. We've got maybe you've seen it on television. It's, it's often uh, uh, on some kind of show, maybe a sports show, um, where they're throwing the salmon back and forth. Well, this one wasn't thrown. This one was gently caressed. It's a beautiful piece of salmon. What they have, what, what, what they don't tell you is that there's a bunch of these, what's called pin bones. These attach to the spine and when it's filleted, they stay in the fish. Now, if you cook it with the pin bones in, your guests are gonna have a bunch of pin bones to chew through. But I have this fancy little uh, tweezer here. Now, if you have a little pair of needle nose pliers, clean them off really well, put, sanitize them, and then you could use them to dig in here. Now, I like to, um, with my finger, find the bone, go in with the tweezer, and pull the bone. Now, if you have a wet paper towel right here, you can just lay it onto the, the bone onto the towel, and the wet towel will stick to the bone. Come right off your, uh, off your tweezer. That's another pro tip. Well, I'm gonna finish this up. This is a little boring to do them all on, on video, so I'll see you when I'm done. So what did I do? I, I took the salmon and portioned it. Um, this is a little bit more than what the recipe calls for, but I wanted to have a little extra because we got an extra person coming over for dinner tonight. So I made five. Yours will make four. And um, hey, if you're, um, if you're concerned about the skin, I've got the skin on there because of the omega uh, fatty acids that I want if I'm going through chemotherapy. I personally like it anyway. Um, if you don't like it, when you buy the fish, ask the fishmonger, or if it's in the butcher department, the fish is there, ask the butcher to take the skin off for you. You don't have it skinless, if that's your preference. I want you to have what you want. This is um, tarragon, gorgeous. We're not gonna to use too much of it, but um, I wanted to show it to you. Um, what separates a, a good home cook from the average home cook? Using fresh herbs really does help the cause. Um, so use them. We're gonna use a, we're gonna take this off the stem, just like Jerry's doing here, and uh, we're gonna chop it, and we're gonna use it with, uh, mix it with a little bit of Italian parsley, and then with the breadcrumbs, and this is an ingredient in the, for the gremolata. And that's just the topping that we're gonna to put on the fish. Okay. All right, so thanks, Jerry, for picking all that uh, tarragon. Now we need some Italian parsley and calls for a half a bunch of Italian parsley. Now, you know, I'm more of um, uh, the David Chang school of thought here, where the stems have a lot of flavor. Why are we gonna pick and pick it all off the stem and throw out the stems. Um, he's famous for using all, all the stems. Um, if you don't know who David Chang is, he, uh, I sure would hope to get him in the new cookbook. He, uh, he owns some restaurants in, uh, in New York City, Las Vegas, and he's on, he's all over social media. Look him up, David Chang, if you don't know him. So I'm just gonna take this parsley. I'm gonna, it's been washed. I'm gonna bend it back. And I'm going to take my knife and run it through uh, for a rough chop at first. I love the sound of a sharp knife going through parsley stems. It sounds so good and crunchy. All right, so I'm not going to use those. Oh, forgive me, I'm not using them at all. Now we're just going to rough chop. And at this point, Gonna mix the tarragon in. We'll chop the tarragon with the rest of this parsley and get our mix. Uh, 
All right, so this is the herb part. Remember what I said? What separates an average home cook from a really good home cook? Fresh herbs. Beautiful homegrown garlic. This, uh, this came from Jerry's backyard. This neighborhood in Beacon Hill, Seattle used to be called uh, Garlic Gulch and famous for being able to grow uh, garlic profusely. So what do we have? I just really need one clove here. I took the beautiful stem off. Look at that gorgeous garlic. I'm gonna peel this and mince it small and uh, it'll go into the gremolata as well. We've got two, our two final ingredients here. We've got uh, breadcrumbs and I'm using these panko breadcrumbs and these are really easy to find. I mean, if you make your own homemade breadcrumbs, fantastic. And that, that's just great, use them. But these are easy to find in almost every grocery store in America. And what I did was I just put them in a cast iron pan. The oven is already uh, uh, going at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I brown them to get this result. Now, hazelnuts, they grow all over the Northwest here and they're used a lot in French cooking. Um, these are beautiful Oregon hazelnuts. And I put, after I toasted the breadcrumbs, I put the hazelnuts in this type of cast iron pan, put them in the oven again at 350 degrees and browned them well. And they are so nice and crunchy and delicious. Now I'm gonna chop these and I'm gonna mix them with the um, panko, the herbs, and we're gonna make this hazelnut gremolata. Off to the races, let's go. All right, it's time to assemble the gremolata. All these great ingredients are prepped. We'll start with the hazelnuts. Let's get some tablespoons of one, two, three, four. Well, that's a heavy four. I thought that would be just about enough the minced garlic. The parsley and tarragon. And the breadcrumbs. <clears throat> oh well, that looks good. Now, We've got some beautiful extra virgin olive oil here. Use the best that you have. We wanna get some nice flavor in. This is a Moroccan olive oil premium, you know, first cold pressing. It says it's bold and dynamic and it sure is. So we'll use some of that. First up, what I wanna do though, is let's incorporate all of this. Now, doesn't that look nice? All right, let's, uh, let's get this thing cooking. We need to um, just put oil up the pan a little bit, use a little bit of a paper towel and just wipe it. There we go, isn't that nice? Let's lay the salmon onto the pan. You wanna give it a little bit of room and not crowd the pan. It'll cook along the edges nicely. All right, so there we have it. Now, what do we have to do? Make sure your, pre your oven is preheated to 350. Add the gremolata. I 
they've got them all covered. Now we can go back, add some more. You wanna get a, a good quarter inch um, covering on each piece of filet. This one really needs some more, doesn't it? I know you'll let me know in the comments. I hope you'll let me know in the comments. Please um, hit that subscribe button. That would be awfully helpful to the Chemo Kitchen's mission. And you let me know if you like this. All right, you see the mushrooms have wilted. They're releasing their moisture. We're cooking the moisture out of the pan. Well, something with more moisture goes back in it, and this is the celery root. And we really are just gonna get this so it's wilted and a little soft. So this will take uh, about four or five minutes. Now what we're looking to do here though is layer seasoning. So let's get some salt into this. Let's crack some pepper into it now. Oh my gosh, it smells so great, the celery root. Just that faint, faint uh, smell of celery. So nice. Oh yeah. How do you know when it's done? Uh, by feel on the side. What do you want to feel for? I, I want to feel that it is um, has a little bit of firmness to it, but it's still a little squishy. <laughs> so that it is, we want it to be cooked, um, but not overcooked. So we're gonna let it rest just a minute as this catches up, yeah. and then we'll plate up. All right, now look at that. It's seasoned up beautifully. The mushrooms are nice. The, um, the, the celery root is just wilted lovely. We still have a little crunch in it. We want a little texture. Let's get that on the plate. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Looks amazing. Now let's get one of these. It's a little hot. And there we have it. This is the salmon with hazelnut gremolata, chanterelle mushrooms, and celery root. We could finish it with a little bit of the olive oil. This is a little bit of Malden salt. That's French, and that's just beautiful. Thank you, Terry. This is such a gorgeous dish.